Hey, moron! <laughs> hey, moron! Duh! <laughs> look, look at me! I'm the whole water boy, duh! Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. As always, I want to say thank you all for watching commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so we can continue to grow and bring you all the news and perspective on what the hell the Dallas Cowboys are doing. And, you know, I don't know that anybody really and truly knows exactly what the Dallas Cowboys are doing especially the Dallas Cowboys. But I'm going to try and see if I can kind of get into the head of it. Um, I went back this morning and I listened to the 28 minutes of Jerry Jones at the Senior Bowl where he said that the Cowboys were going to go all in. You know, um, a couple of thoughts on this because in some regards, listening to him, he was saying that the way you hold people accountable – is the, by, by writing the checks. And listening to him talk about Mike McCarthy and saying things like, Mike McCarthy, and, and this is where I think we actually need one more year just to let this go for no other reason than to keep Dak Prescott in the same offense two years in a row. Here's the thing. I know it sucks. It truly sucks that we did not do anything in the playoffs, okay? But as Jerry Jones says, you're hanging around the rim. And I like being around the rim because at least you feel like you're close. I know people say blow it up and start all over, but in some regards you could kind of look at it and say, with letting go, with Tyron Smith not coming back, instead of them being aggressive saying we got to bring back the big guy, or letting Biotis go, or letting go of Dante Fowler, of uh, Navelle Gallimore, of um, Dorrance Armstrong and things. These are moves that now people are killing us for that we're also saying you can't stop the run. And as I listen to Jerry talking about all of this, where he's talking about, because he said actually in this interview, and I've heard him say it elsewhere as well, about running the football and stopping the run. And for me... I have been screaming that from the high heavens for years. I have been talking about getting run stoppers from back when Calais Campbell was a free agent from Arizona, from the times when Demario Davis getting a run stopping great linebacker from 2018. These aren't new problems, but it seems like the light bulb has finally come up. And when you see the places that we've lost so many players, they have direct correlation to that. Tony Pollard was your running back, your offensive lineman of your center. And we can all look at this and we can all agree that Biotish was not Travis Frederick. We know that Tyron Smith averages actually over the last four years, seven and a half games a season and one of the other things he pointed out in here which was really interesting was he said you know he said you've got to look at spreading the money around he says you know most teams have 10 people on their team which is true that eat up about 70 percent of the roster so the plan here is and this goes back to if you're overpaying for a free agent, if you're going through and you're bringing in an Odell Beckham Jr. at $15 million a year and sign him to three years, then that means, yeah, you may end up getting a player who might be really good, but the negative is, is what does that prevent you from getting? And I know Cowboy fans are going to say, well, we ain't got Jack. Well, here's where you actually have to look at it and say they have gotten some players on this field that have played that you are now mad about leaving that when they signed them or drafted them, you weren't happy about it. You said, this guy's a bum. Why are we signing this guy? Well, quite frankly, when you consider Randy Gregory was going to be a $75 million contract and we signed a deal with Dante, excuse me, with Dorrance Armstrong that was for about four or 5 million a year. 
You know, people are saying, you screwed up by letting Randy Gregory go. And that's not just fans. That's all the talking heads. In reality, signing him over Randy Gregory was actually, in retrospect, the better move. The better move was actually taking that fifth-round draft pick, bringing in Brandon Cooks, instead of paying $15 million to Odell Beckham, who only stayed there in Baltimore for a year. And believe me, I hate trying to defend the Cowboys. But I've seen Buffalo go out there and make all kinds of moves and have the you know generational quarterback. I don't see them winning the Super Bowl. I don't. It's hard to win the Super Bowl. And you need everything to go right. Now, we've had deficits. We had a lot of deficits last year. Getting rid of Zeke and Zeke's production over the last few years has been going down a cliff. We got rid of him when we didn't replace him. In today's NFL, as much as last year they said running backs are passe, they realize how important running the football actually is. I believe the Cowboys will be looking for a stud running back in this year's draft. Not in the first round. But I believe they also recognize that we have to do better on the offensive line, which is where I think they're going to go with offensive linemen. They are in a good position because Tyler Smith, who was originally drafted to be the heir apparent, for Tyron Smith, could play left tackle. But whether you find, if you're lucky enough to get a great left tackle, a great center, or a great guard, you can plug him in, and our offensive line could be that much better. And the other point on this is, too, sometimes you let go people and not re-sign them because you know what you have behind them may be as good or better that is also cheaper. Right now, we need to find out about guys like Sam Williams. Sam Williams, and it was funny last night because somebody commented and said, he's like boss man fat. No, he's not. No, he's not. Does he make some boneheaded penalties on special teams? Yes, he does, but he also blocks punts. He's young, he's raw, and he's inexperienced. And as a part-time player, and this is where the Cowboys continually have this rotation of so many guys, you never, you don't know if he just never really got into a rhythm. But a guy who's 6'4", 261, that ran a 4'4", who can run down on kickoffs and be the first man down there making the tackle or block punts, is a guy who should have more time on the field, who should be able to make more plays. Now, in his two years, in limited time, he's had eight and a half sacks. Now, we'll see if that correlates to him being better. Let's say we've got somebody like a Mozzie Smith. Mozzie Smith, who was a complete disappointment last year. But part of that was you had a lot of rotation of guys that were already in front of him. And as a rookie, your eyes are wide open. You don't know your head from your ass. And Dan Quinn, maybe he had a disdain for him. I don't know, but he does not like really big guys. He likes tall. He likes lean, he likes fast, and he likes you to be able to rush the quarterback. And those weren't the things that Mozzie Smith was. Mozzie is a big cog that you just sit in the middle. And you don't know how the weight loss affected him. They're putting the weight back on. Maybe he takes a little bit of a step forward. And you have guys like Schoonmaker. Schoonmaker, who was injured all offseason and stuff, never really got going. But you don't know with tight ends, it's a position that usually takes a couple of years to go. If Schoonmaker can step up, uh, you know, get up there, maybe better than, say, Hendershot, he's got ability, he can block, and Jake Ferguson step up, all of a sudden, things are looking a lot better. So some of this stuff, and Brock Hoffman as one of our offensive linemen, a guy that they're really high on. Some of these guys may just need the opportunity to be able to play to achieve because we've been here before with players and we look and we say we don't have now here's the other part of it i'm going to say that i i recognize that we are disappointed because we have not gone out to get the high price free agents i get that but jerry is right about trying to be logistic with how you spend that money I say Eric Kendricks is going to be a good signing for us. I say Eric Kendrick may be the best linebacker we've had in a couple of years. 
Uh, that's not a reach. That's not a reach. Let's see what they do going forward. But let me play a clip from Jerry here because I want you to listen to, I hope I got the right spot. And the ones that are, are having success. And so my point is, uh, uh, you would expect uh, someone to really zero in and um, uh, recognize that not Mike. Mike hadn't had the years I've had of not going to the uh, of advancing in the playoffs. Mike McCarthy had. He's actually have a, has a real good record in the playoffs. And of course, he has a Super Bowl, and I've gotten to be a part of three. Mm -hmm. But the point is, uh, the, I look at and recognize that Mike's issues and my issues aren't the same. My issues and Dak issues aren't the same, okay? Uh, Dak's issues on the Cowboys are just seven years of the Cowboys. And uh, Mike's are only four of the Cowboys. And the I've problems go 29 issues, years. So I've got more to look at. When I go back, I recognize that. I do, very much. But what the mistake has been is that it would be is if you thought there weren't adjustments made over the last 30 years. Okay? And obviously, uh, uh, they, since you don't get to hold that Lombardi trophy up, uh, there's very few of them that are right. And it isn't necessarily right. It's a step forward to be sitting holding the conference championship trophy up and not holding the uh, uh, Super Bowl trophy up. But so all of those things uh, go through my mind. But uh, uh, there's nobody, nobody, nobody. Uh, that's on any more of a uh, incentive plan uh, as far as responding to it than I am. What do you tell fans? Why, why should fans believe this year will be different? Well, uh, I... It seems like the base is disillusioned and, and yeah, fired uh, up and upset what, as ever. Yes, yes. What I would say is I hope it's not different going into uh, the first playoff game where we've got the second seed. I hope it's not different at all to that point where we got the second seed. Okay, now let's talk about how we might make it different against the when we play in that game and, and uh, get a win. Okay, mm -hmm. we need to stop the run better. There you go. And we need to uh, uh, be more uh, physical and we need to run better. There you go. That's that's it in a nutshell. That is it in a nutshell. The fact that he finally recognizes that, I'm telling you, is a major deal for the Cowboys. Typically, you know, they're not addressing that. And typically, we're just re-signing the same guys. So, yes, you want to get the great big names that you know. And a lot of times, those guys don't pan out. They just don't. You have to at least look and say, Penny Pinching has found some good players. Now, the other portion of this that people don't seem to see and recognize is, it isn't just that first week of free agency when you've seen teams that have gone all in and so forth. You've seen teams make trades like the Eagles have during the season or bringing in somebody else, making a trade for Von Miller for the Rams or bringing in Odell Beckham to reload during the season, to bring in some more talent or take care of some injuries. And so, you know, don't just go crazy because we're in the first week and we've only signed one player. Give it some more time and we'll see where we are. That's all I'm going to say is I believe at least they are looking at this slightly different than they do in the past. It's not about just re-signing our own guys. It's a matter of now we're tearing down the building somewhat. And before we bring the new shit in, we need to pick up the get the debris out of here. Okay? Because you're trying to put new shit on top of old shit, it don't work. You go ahead, you, you wipe the slate on the players that you want to get rid of, the, the problems that you see when you're dissecting the body, and say, we got the rotted boards out now. Let's bring in the new studs that are going to be replacing them and start building this thing again. Let's go to ESPN and hear their take on what's going on with Dak Prescott's contract. 
Stream it tomorrow only on Disney+. Plus. Let's run the hurry up with Jeff Darlington starting in Dallas. Jeff, the Cowboys adjusted Dak Prescott's contract yesterday. What does this mean for them? Well, this doesn't mean all that much, Ryan. Ultimately, what they did is they threw a lawn chair off the Titanic. <laughs> they need to figure out way more when it comes to Dak Prescott's contract. They basically converted $5 million of his signing bonus into uh, guaranteed money for this coming season. That only frees up $4 million from what will be a $59 million cap hit in 2024. They need to fully redo Dak Prescott's contract if they're going to get any true cap relief for, for this coming season. Tim, the Dallas Cowboys were supposed to be all in on this offseason. Has the mishandling of Dak's contract situation set them back? Yeah, I don't think there's any question it has, Ryan. And I think, you know, they're paying for their reluctancy to do a deal when they immediately knew that Dak could play years ago. Mm -hmm. When they started playing that game of chicken to basically say, like, look, you've been the biggest bargain in sports and we're going to hold the fact that you haven't made a lot of money against you, try to offer you an under-market deal, and Dak basically said, look, I'm not signing it. I'm going to play this out to the end, uh, you know, have the franchise tag sitting there. When he did that, he basically won a game of chicken with Jerry Jones. And by doing that, he made himself a lot of money. Dallas has had to kind of kick the can down the road in terms of his contract. But now they're paying for it. And so, look, that's not Dak's responsibility. I know a lot of people are going to say, hey, well, listen, like, like, do what you need to do to get guys around you. That's not Dak's job. That's the Cowboys' yeah. front office job. And so, you know, when you look at what they've done, yeah, it, because of what they've had to pay Dak and how they've had to pay him, that was their own fault. It's a bed they made that they're sleeping in now, and it's hurting them this offseason. Jeff, Mike Williams was in New York to meet with the Jets yesterday. What have you heard about Mike Williams possibly joining the team? We'll, we'll leave that there. We're not going to be talking about other teams that are going out and getting big names. But that's just the way the Cowboys operate, everybody. We know this. This is nothing new um, for any of us. But let's wait and see how it goes because, again, this is just one tool. You know, we may end up seeing some trades like we had um, last year that end up bringing in some veteran players that are really, really good. So we'll know more in about a month because the draft is a little more than a month away and i can't wait to get there as always you know i appreciate each and every one of you guys and i'll see you soon peace